What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. Over the past few weeks, I've been working on this machine right here and it's finally time I can reveal it to you. What you see right here is a sandblasting cabinet, but during the assembly process, I made sure to seal everything off with silicone. That way this machine right here can be used as a vapor blasting machine. Speaking about vapor blasting, there are exactly three key components you should understand before you build something like this yourself. The first key component you have to understand is you'll be using abrasive material to polish up your part or make it look like new again. The second key component you'll need to make something like this is you'll need water and a lot of water circulation. The third key component is you need a power source behind your water that's circulating and your abrasive material to then push that media quicker towards your part, which will also equal in a better finish. The way I have this machine set up is a little bit special and I haven't seen anybody do it yet. YouTube is full of videos with air compressors, but I haven't seen anybody use a pressure washer. If you have, drop a comment down below, send me a link. I'd love to see that video or even read information about that machine. Right now, I'll share with you guys an overview of this prototype that I have right here. Bear with me, this is V1 or the prototype stage, so it can always get better from here. Right after that, I'll share with you guys a demonstration and then I'll share with you guys the final result. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. This right here is the sandblasting cabinet and all the seams have been sealed off with silicone. Since we're using this as a vapor blasting machine, we need water throughout this system and my catch bucket is on the bottom. This right here is a five gallon pail and it has a custom filtration system. I'll share that with you guys later, but it also has the lid on it. So down below, I also have a 3D printed spout that goes directly into a pipe down to the bottom of this bucket. Inside of this bucket, we have media and water, and that media and water will be circulated via a submersible pump. The submersible pump line is this right here. It comes out to the side and goes into the cabinet. Once it goes into the cabinet, it will also go into the handgun, but I'll share that with you guys later. Down below, we also have a cable, and this sump pump actually doesn't have a switch or a float switch. So I also have the cable running to my outlet and I also bought an outlet switch so I can turn on the pump from here. So that right there was the pump in motion and it was working. And as you can see, there's no media on the top. It just goes back into the bucket. Now the bucket doesn't have a filtration system in it. I put a mesh cloth around the perimeter and this is also nylon. So even if it gets wet, it will still disperse water into this bigger bucket. Since I'm using a pressure washer over there, I need a source and clean water without any media in it for the pressure washer. Now, if there's more water in that bucket, it will overflow into this bigger bucket. This is a 100 liter tote and whatever water is excess in the bucket will just overflow into this bucket. Uh, since it was open now for a couple of days, it actually collected a little bit of dust from the shop. And that's why you can see it's a little bit dirty on the surface, but the water that's circulating through the pressure washer will circulate around the outside and it will also fall back into the bucket, but then overflow into the bigger bucket. Right now, I'm gonna talk more about the water supply system and everything that's inside of the blasting cabinet. So on the side of the 100 liter tote, you will notice a line going into the pressure washer that is clean water. And you obviously want a certain water level inside of your bucket. I think I'm running with about 40 or even 50 liters inside of this system. And that will supply enough water for this one and a half gallon a minute pressure washer. The pressure washer supplies water throughout this pressurized line and it goes into the back of the cabinet and it will fall back down into this cabinet. You'll notice the line comes right into here. And I also have this custom made gun. I hope you guys can see this. The pressure line comes right into here. And we also have the valve from the pressure washer that I removed. It was actually in the trigger and I removed it to make this custom gun. The other line that's feeding into the cabinet runs into this elbow and through this clear hose, we have water and media running into the front of this gun. So now if we have media and water coming through here, our pressurized water will shoot in from the back through an orifice and it will come out pressurized and the media will blast up against the part. I put the gun back into the sandblasting cabinet so you guys can see the hose and the gun as I turn on the sump pump underneath. Thank you. 
As you can see, water and media are coming out at the same time. I have a part inside of the blasting cabinet and I'll share with you guys a quick demonstration then we'll move on to the table and I'll also share with you guys some finished parts. I removed this part from the vapor blasting cabinet and now I'll share with you guys some other parts on the table. These are some of the parts I did previously off camera and this is the part that just came out of the vapor blasting cabinet. As you can see, all the parts are aluminum. So this cover right here was already done previously. The finish is really nice in my opinion. I didn't do the inside or at least the machine surface because I wouldn't do that. That could harm the machine surface and then it wouldn't seal properly. Uh, so I just did the outside and I'm really happy with the finish. As you can see, it's kind of sparkly because the media that I'm running over here is actually a 20 to 30 grit and it's also crushed glass. I think I have to pick up a different media so I get a better finish, uh, which would be with a bead and also a smaller grain so it also can go into some of those imperfections on the cast aluminum. As you can see over here on the aluminum pan, it doesn't look like one color or it doesn't look like a perfect uh, surface. But as you come close in, uh, it's actually really nice. Just the middle section, I should have gone over probably once more, which is from left to right. But then down below, it's actually really nice. But I would like to get into the grain a little bit more or into the cast. And I think I can achieve that with a smaller grain of glass bead. Now over here, you'll also see some little spots around the perimeter. And that's actually just from me touching it over time. Uh, the oils in my hand probably went back onto the aluminum and I would just have to clean this off with some acetone uh, to get rid of that. But as you can see, it's all one finish and it's really nice. It's really consistent and I'm really happy that it doesn't damage the aluminum all too much. Now over here on this part that just came out of the vapor blasting machine, you'll see this surface is still a little bit wet and this surface has been cleaned up. This probably took three to four minutes and that's not even half of this part. And I'd also have to do the inside if I'd want to finish it off. I have a feeling with a smaller grit of bead, I would get a better finish. As you can see, it's still kind of dark in the lower spots. And I think a smaller bead would just be able to clean it up a little bit better. The bigger bead just can't get into those smaller areas. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. It's just the efficiency of cleaning, but I think I have enough pressure and I also have enough media flow throughout the machine. As you can see, this is basically a before and that right there is an after. And it's a little bit darker on this side because it is still wet. The way this machine stands right here, it's still a prototype. So what that means is I can always improve it in the future. If that means changing up the pressure washer, the filtration system down below, or even something inside of the cabinet. The only reason why I built this was just proof of concept. What that means is I wanted to build this to see if it actually works. If you guys think this setup is a good idea, I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. If there's enough interest, I might do a part two video on this. I'll share with you guys probably drawings, schematics, and whatnot, and even how I built this, or even go into more depth on what I have right here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because I will be using this more in the near future, especially on the BMW R60 slash 5 project, and then for other projects in the future. So with that said, I'll see you guys in an upcoming video, and thanks for watching.